I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, August the 29th, brought to you in part by Ytex Corporation. Ytex provides excellence in animal health, including but not limited to all American ID tags for all classes of livestock. For more information about Ytex, go to y-tex.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards. Good run for them here for the regular feeder cattle and cow sale on Tuesday, 2,500 head. Uh, Talked to Lane Conkle there, he said they're going to have about 400 head of calves. Uh, be bigger calves and mostly unweaned. Uh, kind of having a hard time finding friends, some of those, uh, like usual this time of year. But about 1,800 head of yearlings, including 20 straight loads of 7 to 9 weight steers. And two of those are going to be uh, NHTC approved there guys so uh, if you're in that kind of thing and you want to get a hold of some of those they'll be top top quality they've got them there at Beaver County Stockyards here today on Tuesday uh, they're going to have uh, four loads of seven and eight weight heifers be several piece of loads and be some grazing yearlings there too uh, gonna have a good run of cows too about 400 cows got a long string of cows coming in and a lot of them are going to be bred, uh, including 120 cows coming in. They're going to be six years and younger, uh, going to be P1s and P2s. So if you guys uh, want to get started there, uh, you got some shortbreads there. And the cows are not huge, so likely you'll be able to outbid the packers on them. Uh, you know, the cows are going to be 1,200 pounds and down, so you might have a chance in getting some of them. Uh, away from the Packers where you still like them. So check those out. Uh, got about 40 head of pears coming in. Uh, the cows are all, all English. The calves are going to have a, a brangus to them, have a tick of ear on them. But uh, they want to be to be, be sure and let y'all know, going to have five head of solid black Corianni bulls. And they're gentle. If you want that, they're hard to find. You can't ever find one when you want one. They've got five head of them, solid black Corianni bulls there. Uh, be awesome to put on some heifers there, guys. But uh, next week, on uh, the day after Labor Day, they're going to have a, a, their big feeder flash beaver clash. And uh, you need to be there for that. 1,500 yearlings already on the books for that sale. Uh, and then on Labor Day uh, evening, uh, going to have that uh, fair piece. Uh, talk. They're also going to be talking LRPs. Uh, I do think that Andy Cunningham's going to be there and talk about gross margin policies. I'm going to be there and give a presentation. And uh, they're going to have a steak dinner. Uh, it's going to start around 5 o'clock in the afternoon uh, on Labor Day evening or afternoon. Uh, they've already got uh, most places filled there, but uh, like uh, the guy said, if somebody called one of the RSVP and, and we're sure coming, I don't believe they'd turn you away, but we've already got a good crowd coming uh, on Labor Day evening for that uh, dinner there. But uh, feeder futures catch air on Monday. Uh, you saw them take off and uh, was looking at some other analysts and people talking about the market and they were talking about fundamentals I don't think it's fundamentals. I think they saw a technical spot in there. We said last week uh, that the technicals looked positive for the cattle futures. And I think the feeders uh, took a little uh, jump there and then the algorithms took, took over. Uh, it's not that I think that uh, you know, the market's got a, a much uh, pressure to it. But uh, we've had just about every day uh, besides Monday over the last month has been more fundamentally bullish for the feeder cattle market than, than it was on Monday. Corn was up eight and a quarter cent, which ain't a bunch, but it was inching back up there close to $5 a bushel. Corn's been uh, diving down here of late. Uh, your fats were cheaper last week. Uh, we sure found out how much cheaper. Uh, and they lost uh, you know over $2 on your weighted average in your five area feeding region. That doesn't bode well. The heat is still an issue out there. Um, your slaughter is down, but I will grant you that the Packers keeping that slaughter backed up like they have in the low 600s for the week instead of the mid 600s like what is normal, uh, eventually that's going to be bullish. 
They can only do that for so long, guys, and they've got to fill their coffers. They've got to, you know, they, they sell most of that stuff out front. Uh, they sell most of that stuff on some kind of a formula deal, uh, big packages. They've got uh, promises to keep there uh, for product, and they're going to have to have it. So they've been playing pretty coy here, keeping this fat cattle, cash fat cattle market backed up, keeping the kills down and showing that. But eventually they are going to have to come uh, with, some, with some bigger slaughter here. But uh, you look at that board, the way it jumped up there. Another thing that doesn't make me believe in that big jump that the feeder futures took on Monday is your fats really didn't take it. And we did see some decent gains uh, way out front, uh, but here nearby uh, didn't pull it too much. When September feeders uh, are up over $3 and October fat's only up 37 cents, uh, it didn't fool your fat cattle futures at all. But uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who was looking at some of those uh, spring feeder cattle futures out there and they're looking pretty handsome, guys. They've been handsome, but over 260. Uh, and he's going to have calves to sell then. He said, uh, he said, I checked on that and there hasn't been enough trade at those new high levels to get an LRP on them yet. And I wasn't uh, aware of that. There's a lot of rules on that. You need to be calling these guys I'm telling you about on uh, these LRPs because I didn't realize that there was a threshold that you had to meet uh, on your futures there before uh, they would uh, let you have an LRP at those levels yet. But uh, your fat cattle uh, up to 193 and change for April live cattle. Uh, that looks pretty good too. Uh, can we get cash fats there? They'd, they'd have to show it to me. You know, everybody was saying we're going to have $2 fat cattle. We did in a brick and mortar auction, uh, but not on a, on a direct basis. And with no more uh, negotiation that we have, uh, and hardly any cash trade in your fat cattle. I, I just don't see how we're going to get them up there. They just will not allow it to happen. These packers, they know they've got to buy a few cattle on the open market and, and negotiate it, but they just don't want to uh, give in at all. And you can't blame them. I mean, that's the one thing they can control is uh, how many is what they're going to pay for cattle. And if they don't pay for them, they just don't get them. They know they're still going to get all those formula cattle, and that's over 80% of their needs. And when, when they're killing, uh, so much less than what they've been. They just don't need that much. But we've, uh, we've, uh, we as cattle people and the cattle feeders have uh, played right into their hands. Uh, it's where they don't have to push the market up at all. But, uh, you know, that being said, uh, grazing calves are still cheap. Absolutely cheap. Uh, you see them when we see some calves come in uh, that are all straightened out and had all their shots. Uh, the sky is still the limit on them. Uh, and we are starting to see some bigger ballers come to town. Like I told you, they're going to have some at Beaver County Stockyards. And I'm going to jump out there and make another promise. I'm not really going too far out on a limb this time, but uh, I always tell you about promises made, promises kept. I believe and I, I know we will see the biggest gap this fall between calves that are all straightened up, preconditioned, had their shots, and can't remember what their mama looks like uh, and, and the, the difference in price between similar quality cattle that, that uh, haven't had shots and are not weaned we're going to see the biggest difference in price than we've ever seen before of course the prices are higher than we've ever seen before so that's not that big of a deal but you know somebody that that doesn't want to go to the work to, to wean their calves and they've got good calves and they uh, they've gotten along without weaning you know, they'll probably say, well, you know, let, let them get sick and die on somebody else's place. I'm just taking them to the sale. They'll pull them off the cows and, and rush them to the sale. Of course, they see people on the video do it all the time. But those are long, long strings of ranch-raised calves and reputation. But uh, taking them into the sale barns, if you've got a hodgepodge bunch there and you're just bringing uh, fleshy ball and calves to the sale and, and you might sell a 500-pound steer calf that's pretty fancy, and he might bring three dollars a pound but the guys that went to the work weaned their calves gave them all their shots theirs are going to bring 350 or better so uh, you just do what you want to do I mean if you can pay your bills that way if you're not set up to wean I agree sometimes it doesn't make sense if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the facilities to do it 
but there's opportunities for people that do know how to do it and those big uh, soft soggy ball and calves uh, are going to be uh, in a significant discount and there'll be an opportunity for those guys that know how to take advantage of it this this fall talk about your board uh, august live cattle futures are up just two cents at 187.70 of course that's winding down october's up 37 at 181.55 of course, they're going to jack with that uh, live cattle futures when we lose August and we drop drift off in there to September, which is a bastard month. They'll run it back down there and act like this rally's over. This rally is not going to be over for at least a year and a half, guys. Don't worry about that. Uh, October up 37 cents at 181.55. I think I give you that. Your back months were up 52 cents to up a dollar 12. August feeder cattle up 262 at 250 and a quarter they've got to settle with the cash index on thursday the cash index is two or three dollars less than that monday wasn't any kind of a blow away so and it's always a couple days behind uh, i don't see your cash feeder cattle index being over 250 on thursday so that's going to have to back up of course there's no trade in it at all anyway but september feeder cattle up 307 at 254.27 and your back months on feeder cattle all up big from two and a quarter to 305 big gains of course we've talked about that already uh, new crop december corn up eight and a quarter cent at 496 and a quarter new crop november beans up 18 at 1405 and three quarters back over 14 bucks a bushel kansas city hard red winter wheat for september down 16 and a half 737 and a half your weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle uh, in the five area feeding region uh, total head count 54,900 head that's nothing that compares to 62,300 the previous week 61,300 same week a year ago uh, live sales of fat steers and heifers last week in your five area sold from 178 to 188 uh, and it was kind of heavy on the lower side of that, you know, uh, nearly 2,700 head at 178, uh, 13,400 at 179. Of course, that's all in the Southern Plains. Uh, 9,700 head at 185, only 342 at 188. Uh, of course, that price spread was steady to a buck lower, but your weighted average was quite a bit lower in your five area. Weighted average on live steers in your five area was 182.75, down two dollars and twenty nine cents. Uh, your weighted or your price spread on dress sales in the five area last week was 287 to 295, uh, and it was it was more towards the the upper end there. Only 40 head at 287. Uh, they had uh, a lot at 292, about 2700 at 295. Uh, that was. Uh, uh, basically steady to as much as three dollars lower uh, than your in your price spread last week and your weighted average was a dollar lower or dollar and one cent lower at 292.75 but uh, regionally your northern plains were two to four dollars lower from 184 to 186 for the most part Nebraska was was heavy on the lower three to four dollars lower they lost more than Iowa of course uh, and your dress trade steady to three lower, mostly at 292. Uh, your southern plains held steady at 179. Nationwide, 68,900 heads sold, negotiated nationwide, 17% of those for the two to four week delivery, which is light on that. So good job for guys uh, making them take those cattle uh, for immediate delivery, which is in the next two weeks, not letting them set them up for, the, for after that. But uh, that 68,900 compared to 72,000 last week, 70,600 the same week a year ago. Uh, the negotiated grid this past week was 40,900. Forward contracts, 23,500 head. And formula sales, 283,400 head. Why can we not get the fat cattle market up? Because they're getting all those formula sales with no negotiation, no price discovery, no transparency. But uh, last week in your four out of five regions that we get to see information from, Iowa sold 17,600, which is like for them. Nebraska sold 20,500, which is like for them. Kansas sold 8,700, 
which is fairly light for them. And Texas sold 8,100, which is about normal for them. Box beef cutout values uh, were lower after we saw big gains late last week. Did not hold them, at least on Monday anyway. Uh, Monday afternoon, your choice cuts were down 86 cents at 317.04. Uh, selects down 58 cents at 292.09. Slaughter looking good to start the week, 125,000. That's as about as much as they have, have been uh, doing on a Monday, so that's uh, kind of encouraging there. Talk about what else is going on. The Night Latch Group, that's Andy Cunningham there in western Oklahoma. He is going to be at Beaver County Stockyards on Labor Day. Labor Day evening there, he's going to be on hand. Uh, to kind of tell you about the gross margin policies that he uh, specifically uh, does more than their pushes more than anything else. Of course, he can do LRPs, he can do crop insurance, drought insurance, whatever you want to do. But uh, if you guys are, are interested in talking to somebody about that, uh, and he can make it to uh, Beaver County Stockyards uh, for Andy Cunningham to be there. Uh, if not, go online and check him out at nightlatch.net. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction late in the day on Monday uh, based on an 800-pound steer up through your middle 12 states. 245.40, that was up $1.09 from the end of last week. So it was awesome gain there. You're seeing me cash feeder cattle index is a bit higher than that, but it's always behind, so we're not sure. Uh, I think it's got a dip to go yet. Let's talk about uh, your big sales on Monday. OKC Wet or Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City, excuse me, 6,000 head. No sale next week for Labor Day, uh, but this week uh, feeder steers were a buck higher. Six weight uh, feeders were $4 higher. Uh, feeder heifers, $1 to $3 higher. Calves, not well tested, but the good calves uh, that were weaned had their shots 10 bucks higher. Uh, and like I said, they're, they're still cheap, guys. Joplin Regional Stockyards underestimated again. Uh, they were only looking for 3,500 head, ended up with 4,900 head. No sale for them next week either for Labor Day, uh, but uh, had mostly calves come in. Sharply, sharply higher in Joplin on calves. Steer calves, 13 to 20 bucks higher. Uh, of course, they, it was lower last week. And they're regaining that and a bunch more. Heifer calves, eight to sixteen dollars higher. Uh, the the test of feeder steers they had were steady to three bucks higher. No good test on yearling feeder heifers, but a stick out sale in Joplin with seventy nine steers weighed six twenty three, bring two eighty three fifty. Nothing to sneeze at there. Talked to Ted Baum. They had a good sale in Elgin, Nebraska at Elgin Livestock Sales. Featured consignment there was seven loads, 884 pound backgrounded heifers. They bring 234 and a quarter. Your National Beef Wire stick out sale of the day was Sioux Falls Regional Livestock. That's a DV auction broadcaster there. Uh, Worthing, South Dakota. 4,500 head there. Big sale for them. And, uh, and the market was really good and it was mostly on the heavier weights but check out this automated market report from Cattle Market Central and look at your bigger weights 474 head of 8 weight steers in Worthing, South Dakota averaged 860 pounds with a weighted average price of 248.59 381 head of 9 weight steers averaged 927 at 238.83 look at the heifers 286 seven weight heifers average 751 weighted average price 23978 773 head of eight weight heifers in Sioux Falls Regional they averaged 859 pounds average price 23693 and almost 300 298 head of nine weight heifers average 952 weighted average price 21907 uh, and they were your uh, top sale for the day. Uh, most impressive quote I saw anywhere on Monday. And your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day is Sioux Falls Regional Livestock of Worthing, South Dakota. Uh, sold a long string of bigger steers that weren't on that automated marker report I just showed you. They had 255 head, weighed 1,037 pounds, bring 235. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.